good to be here with you tonight. This is the final of our series on gratitude, and we've had some excellent talks on gratitude, and I'm going to try to put a cap on it all this evening. And uh, the title of my talk is Gratitude, Moving from Spectator to Participant. The uh, Yoga Sutras of Patanjali are the, it is the authoritative text on yoga. And uh, Patanjali didn't invent yoga, but systematized it and, and brought all these various yoga thought streams into one very short volume of statements. One of the, the most uh, amazing pieces of aphorisms that are in there is he says in the first chapter that the, one of the fastest ways to enlightenment is through three things, uh, contemplation or, or meditation on friendliness, compassion, and joy. And it's like, whoa. And of course, it gets into all kinds of many other things, but he says, you can do all those other things, but if you just focused on friendliness, compassion, and joy, you'd also get there. And it's like, okay, pretty cool. And then it shows up again in the third chapter of the four chapters of the book. It is the only statement that appeared twice in that volume. So obviously there was a desire to make that point pretty clear. The particular friendliness in Sanskrit is Maitri, which means it's better translated into English, universal kindness. Compassion is pretty straightforward, a pretty good match, Karuna in Sanskrit, and it's a pretty good match with English as well. But joy, mudita, the third of them, is it's a lot bigger picture than just joy. It is, mudita is a deep, joyful gratitude for the good fortune of yourself and others. So it goes much deeper than just joy itself. Joy is wonderful, and joy is a part of compassion. Joy is a part of friendliness. Joy is a part of gratitude. But this particular concept, mudita, is deeper, and that's what I'm going to spend some time with this evening, is a little deeper take on, on this issue. Because I really think that when we get down to it, uh, this mudita concept, this concept of uh, gratitude, deep, joyful gratitude, for, the, for others and ourselves is one of the greatest antidotes we have to what is in our culture uh, a huge problem of envy of folks wanting what other people have. And we live in a time where advertising focuses very heavily on getting something you don't have that somebody else might have. And also if they have it, I should have it. And that creates envy in us. Um, it's a very human response to that. There's the other thing is, is envy is the cousin, if you will, very close blood relative to covetousness, wanting something that somebody else has that we don't have, that we didn't work towards, we didn't bring about in our lives, but we want it because they have it. And that's covetousness versus envy, which is wanting something that you don't have. So one leads to the other, and one of the things about gratitude is that that undercuts all of those, that, that whole progression. If we hang out with gratitude and we build that as a practice into our lives, what ends up happening is, is we move away from envy. We move away from covetousness and wanting things that are not ours. And I think that's, a, that's an important distinction. There's two researchers. That, there, one of the best books I've read in the last couple of years is this one by Brene Brown called Atlas of the Heart. I can't recommend this book enough. She goes into the... Really, the, it's the subtitle is Mapping Meaningful Connection, the Language of Human Experience. And it's all about our emotions and, and how we deal with them or don't deal with them terribly well. And it's like maybe 100 different emotions or whatever it is that she articulates and researches through. It's not just her opinions, but fairly deep research, social science research into that because she's a professor at uh, University of Houston. And then the other one is the works of Robert Emmons, don't think he's any relationship to you. No. Do you know of him? Well, my uncle was named Robert Emmons, but that's not the same. Not the same one either? Okay. So he's with the University of California, Davis, and he's one of the leading researchers on gratitude. 
in psychology, in the psycho, psychological field. I want to read you a couple passages from Emmons and then a couple short ones from Brene Brown from her book. The first one is from Robert Emmons. And this is from his research. People who practice gratitude do not seem to ignore or deny the negative aspects of life. They simply choose to appreciate what is positive as well. They are rated as more generous and more helpful peop by people in, so in their social networks. Emmons' research has shown that by keeping a list of what they were grateful for, these people exercise more often, just like you were talking about, keeping a journal of, of things you're grateful for. Grateful, these people exercise more often, had fewer physical symptoms, felt better about their lives, and were more positive about the week ahead compared to those who recorded in their journals hassles or neutral life events, just blah, blah, blah kinds of things. These folks were more likely to have made progress toward their important personal goals, and it seems gratitude is more motivating than it is demotivating in their lives. So this is where his research in the, in the social science field. There's two statements of his that I want to read because they're, they're zingers. First one is, instead of adapting to goodness, we celebrate it. Instead of adapting to goodness, we celebrate it. In, he's talking about gratitude. In the space we go in with gratitude, we're celebrating goodness versus looking at it from the outside in or adapting or bringing things into that. It's like an inside-out job versus an outside-in. And the second statement he makes is, we become greater participants in our lives as opposed to spectators, hence the title of my talk tonight. Because when you're feeling gratitude, you're no longer a spectator to life. You're feeling it. You're owning what's going on, the goodness that you've got going on in your life in that moment. Now to Brene Brown. Gratitude is an emotion that reflects our deep appreciation for what we value, what brings meaning to our lives, and what makes us feel connected to ourselves and to others. And she talks very clearly about gratitude as a practice, something we have to do and, and bring ourselves to. Emmons' research shows that we have a tendency to want to go towards what we would call negative emotion or hassles, things that are problems. And so we have to counteract that by bringing ourselves back to the moment of gratitude, in the space of gratitude inside ourselves. It doesn't necessarily come natural to do that all the time. Tonight I'd like to talk with you a little bit about making gratitude a here and now emotion versus a past or future exercise. I can look at the past gratefully, yet the emotion of gratitude that I feel if I look back at something I'm grateful about from my past, the emotion is here now. It's not my emotion that I'm recalling from way back then. I am in the space of the gratitude here and now. I'm grateful for my parents. I'm grateful for my mother at 95 years old. We still have her here. I'm grateful for all she gave us growing up. But the moment of gratitude is I'm feeling it is right here as I stand before you, and I feel that. And the same thing goes for each and every one of you. When you feel gratitude, you own it in a moment in time, in a space, here and now. It's, I can be grateful for things in the future, but I don't know how they're going to play. I can be grateful for things in the past, but you know what? I'm really feeling grateful right here, right now. And that's where the power in gratitude is, is it brings us to that alignment. And if you look at Zen teachings, if you look at all of the Eastern teachings, it's all about coming into the space of now. Well, why not walk into a space of gratitude when you're doing it in the space of here and now? You know, we live in a world which celebrates, ter I, I'm going to use this term, terminal dissatisfaction. <laughs> it's killing us. <laughs> and not with kindness. It's really, it's really a time of great upheaval, it, and it is a time of dis, constant dissatisfaction, right? Advertising bombarding us all day long in gross and subtle ways. What's the latest? What's the greatest? You know, got to have this, got to have that, do this, buy this, have this, whatever. And then there's this over-fascination with entertainment. We need to be entertained all the time. So uh, one of the things that that uh, as we had our, our marketing meeting this week with the woman who's handling our marketing now, is she was saying, 
it's no longer enough to have photographs of your presenters. You've got to have videos attached to each one of these courses if we're going to get the reach to the younger folks because they need to be entertained. And the lights went boom. Okay, so what, what are we communicating in our world that we need to be entertained so much? And a lot of it is this electronic stuff that's at our fingertips so we can be entertained constantly. And yet that creates this constant dissatisfaction with, oh, more, 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 and, and more doesn't give us really necessarily anything better. We just think, we, you just think it does. Then there's the overemphasis on our economy, and that always leaves us ill at ease. I mean, the economy is always up and down, and it's always going through cycles. And for over the last couple of years since we came out of the, the COVID time frame, these prognosticators constantly going, well, we're, we're going to enter into in the next few months, we're going to have a horrible recession. And I'm going, where's this horrible recession? I just went to Illinois for a, my high school class reunion. I came back. I have never seen so many semis on I-90, 80, 90 going through Ohio and Indiana and Illinois. I mean, the economy is booming. And I saw it when I, I was traveling also during COVID, and there was like hardly any trucks on the road. And now it's like they're just jamming up everything. <laughs> they're all over the place. And I'm sitting there going, we have a lot of economy. So where's this recession? Yet they've got folks, the economics folks are got everybody churned up. There's going to be a recession. It's right around the corner. It's, it, look out, it's going to get you. You know. So again, terminal dissatisfaction with what we have right now because we think we could lose what we have. And yet, you know, life is deeper than that. It's so much deeper than all of that. Especially this concept of grace that underlies all activity. You know, tonight each of us, as we went into our meditation, we went into that depth of silence. That silence is always there. We all know that. We just have to, we leave it. It doesn't leave us. We get busy. We get caught up in the terminal dissatisfactions of life. The stuff is constantly changing, but it doesn't change. It's always there. We can always just close our eyes and go back and step back into that space. And one of the beautiful things about how we worship here at Fellowships is we carve out time in all of our worship services to go back into that space, to touch into that quiet, to center ourselves, to get back to that place in which we are one with each other, one with the universe, one with our Creator. The underlying power and the emotion of gratitude is the knowingness that that grace is there. I can't think of a, 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 a more amazing thing is sometimes I can struggle with, you know, is God love? Does God love us? Is, who's God? What's God? Whatever. But man, when I go into that silence, all that discussion's over. I feel that oneness of connection to all of everything that exists in the silence and in those moments. What an incredible grace. And I talked earlier in my uh, prior uh, sesh talks this summer about Wendell, quoted Wendell Berry's uh, work, it all turns on affection. What we hold affection for is what we, we put our energy into in life, no matter what that is. And then I had that, my own corollary I had added, it all hinges on grace. And so, yes, it's what we care outwardly for and what we manifest outwardly is what we hold affection for. But I believe that underneath all of that is this concept of grace that supports all in every shape or form. One of the greatest awarenesses that we take is that underlying grace is there for us. I, when I look back at my life, the biggest turning point in my life, I was raised in a very religious family, an incredibly religious family, Methodist and and yet I always felt there was pieces missing. And one of the things that mattered the most was when I had an initiation into TM, Transcendental Meditation. And it was a, a form of meditation. There are many of them out there, but it was the one that did it for me. And bang, I dropped into that silence I've been talking about, into that grace. And I've never looked back. It's been with me ever since. And that was, that was if I look at my life, looking back over the almost 70 years now, 
one of the most significant turning points in my life as an adult was that moment when I hit that place of grace within myself where I knew that I was connected to all of life. It was no longer just here. It was a whole body, whole spirit experience. What is your greatest moment in your life when you look back? I have incredible gratitude for that moment. And I'm sure each of you have moments in your life when you look back where uh, uh, an interaction, a conversation, a relationship, a, a presence, a, a revelation, a visit, whatever it was, something landed on you and it was a turning point in your life. And it brought you in very new directions and opened doors and it was a grace. It was a tremendous grace. It was a gift. You didn't earn. You didn't have to work for it. You landed in it. And somebody in your lives, you know, brought that about. Because it was in an interaction with others. Whether it was the planet interaction or it was with other human beings or whatever. But there's, each of us have those moments of grace in our lives where we can feel. When we go back in, it's past. I realize that. But... As you remember that time, it's that moment right now is that reflection of the gratitude and the depth of gratitude you feel at in the here and now that makes the difference. And that's what I say. Spend some time this week contemplating those moments where you've, your life is turned, if you will, turned on a dime and giving you nine cents change. Okay? And you, and you went off in a different direction because you could and that there was a grace in that moment. And then celebrate that moment. So you're no longer just a spectator. But what you are is a full participant in the joy of that. And bringing the force and the power of that moment to this moment that you're in today. And feeling the, the power of that gratitude. So I leave you that this evening and ask God's blessings upon each of you as we move into this coming week. And uh, we move into the next series, which is on compassion. So thank you.